Today we're going to go over a concept called caustics. So if I search caustics lighting, I guess specifically caustics lighting, it's this effect where light travels through a surface, breaks apart, and makes these patterns. These are the caustic patterns. You see it in pools all the time. You can see it going through glass. And it's something that 3D effects have been emulating for a long time, and sometimes even kind of doing it at a more extreme rate than we see in nature. So there's a scene for you in Google Drive to download in the Caustics folder. For me, I'm just going to open my scene and go to my D drive. And then from there, mine is in advanced lighting. And then when I go to scenes, I'm going to go to caustic demo. Go ahead and don't save. Nothing's there. And just to talk a little bit about how this scene is set up, I have a spring. Actually, if I right click here, you'll notice that it's called a helix. My students are always like a spring. But in the menu, it's called a helix. I also have one of these, which is a platonic solid. You can always roll over if you need to see the names. And I know that's hard to see, but it's right there. This one has a diamond texture on it. This one has a frosted glass, which is why it's showing up. In this scene, I have a couple lights. I have which in Arnold would be an area light. I've pointed it in this direction. I also have a mesh light. And in case you don't know what those are, a mesh light is a light where you just make a mesh. Boop. Say I wanted a circle light. And then I could go through, or a ring light is what they're usually called, and go to lights, mesh light. And now that's a light in my scene. I already have one, though, so. I'm going to zoom back in on my objects and render it. And what you'll see, we won't do the whole thing, is you'll see the scene. And we'll just let it go for a second. Well, maybe a minute. Where we'll go ahead and see a little bit of shininess on the screen. That there's light traveling in the scene, that obviously we need to increase our diffuse, our transmission, rendering like that. But we don't really see that light going through the object very well. We have these really thick shadows, and we don't really have any light patterns reflecting. So for glass, this doesn't look very realistic. How I can change that is a couple different ways. Or one, I can click on the texture in Hypershade. Or I can do it here as well in the standard surface. And if I go through under Advanced, I can click Caustics and exit to Background. Same thing on my other texture. I'm going to go to Standard Surface, or whatever you've named it. Click Caustics and exit to Background. I can limit internal reflections if all I care about are the caustics, but if I want those patterns in there, I'd leave that selected too. Now, there's a couple other settings we really want to change, and some are on the actual object. So if I go to the poly or the helix shape here, and I go to Arnold, you'll notice that the shadows are defaulting to being opaque. And that opaqueness is going to leave it really dark and block out some of those light patterns. So I'm going to unclick that. If I wanted to cheat as well, I could go back to these standard surfaces. And you don't need to do this, but transmission is the way the light goes through. Right now, it's set to white because this light here is white. But if I were to say that this was blue tinted, as I've put in my specular color, I may want to adjust this to having a blue light go through it. That'll make it look more like a solid blue color instead of that kind of muted, but it will, yeah, instead of the muted color, but it will also make that light here reflect a very solid color. So we'll see if we like that. From here, I may also, before I render, want to adjust some of that breaking down that we saw. So I can go to Render Settings. And I'm going to increase my Diffuse to 4, my Transmission to 4, and my Indirect to 4 as well. With that, I also have a lot of other things I can change as well. So if I wanted to go into Ray Depth, I can increase the amount of rays that are going through here, how deep they're going through the objects. 
So if I wanted specular to be a little better or one, I could actually increase the rays, but all of these are going to increase my render time. I could increase the transmission as well if I wanted. I could also move this light closer to the objects because the closer the light is, the more it's actually going to get to those objects. Now I'm probably gonna notice a pretty big spot here, but you'll see the difference when we render. And I am going to cut this down. So this will raise your rendering time a lot. Everything I've just changed will, but for our purposes, I won't make you sit and watch this blue screen forever. Now, as you see, it's always a balance. Increasing the light's intensity in this area has generated more noise where it's darker and we get a slightly better caustic pattern here. But we also have a lot of noise, so I would recommend doing this with GPU rendering.